all our veterans and, and people serving and, and that have served, Lord, we just pray that, that you bless them, Lord, and tell them how much we appreciate it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. I'd like to recognize a special veteran we have in the audience today, Mr. Ronnie Hopper. He's got his brother here. Mr. Steve served with him for a long time. Thank you. It's good to see you. Thank you. Ms. Pyre, I'll get you to lead the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all.
lake for for years. I, I, I sat up there on that lake and I see it. I saw it go down and go down every year, almost for every year. So what we got now? We have lost millions of dollars. All all the counties up and down the lake in the state has lost millions of dollars on the county in action. And you can tell anybody you want to. I don't care. He got me on in that. That not the best thing. Oh, I'm not the best thing. But I do know, I'm a deer hunter. And I do know, if I sit down there on that lake, that's where my, where my hunting area is, so that's how I'm going to stop it there. And over the years, the amount of uh, duck hunters that you hear shooting, that, that number has gone down and down to. Same way with our deer hunting. We got, I've had people in houses coming up there around me. So not only different counties here in Tennessee, but out of state that come to here. Guess what? Because the TWRA has got a ridiculous, ridiculous bag limit on our doe deer. And a lot of you, a lot of you probably don't know, but you'll get a book, you'll get a, get a TWRA book and look at this, the bag limit on no deer. Now, let, let, me, let me rephrase that. Antlerless deer. Because that takes a year. Your little deer can take a little shooting. And that, that cost that a lot of bucks. But one person is allowed to kill three toes of deer a, a, a day for the whole season. Start with both season, the spitting, and they figure that up. That's 133 toes. The camera of this deer. So, what's going to happen? Now, they, they want to say that that's uh, to make so you get you know, a better quality of, of uh, bigger, bigger bucks. I don't like that. He's coming out with my wall in the county district. I got pictures of, of, of rivals on him back here. We don't shoot those. I haven't killed a dog on my property in four or five years. Don't, and don't let them like this <laughs> for that reason. Yeah, but I still don't have too many bucks. Some people say I do, but I don't. But I, I've got big, we've got big, big deal up there. So when you when you take all this, all when you when you get where you, you can't these people come here and they can't kill these deer, just like they can't catch fish, fish, the crappies, blue deer, and stuff. Guess what? They're not going to come. They're going to go somewhere else. Same with the duck hunters. I do know I had. As a friend that rented out a trailer here in Duck County, <coughs> the guys coming in down here to hunt down here in Duck County Park. Not anymore. And I, used, I used to sit there and sound like a war was going on. Where I, where I sit, I can hear, I can hear all up and down the lake. I can hear, I can hear, I can ask, it was so, it was so, so many that I hear Big Sandy Bottom sitting in my deer stand. <laughs> So, you know, what we need to do is we need to get with CWRA. Uh, and I can't do it alone. Another thing that needs to happen there that will bring in more revenue. Uh, they they are all kind of saying, well we need to we need to get we need to get young people in the field. We need to get more women in the field. We need to keep our seniors in the field longer. And that's what they do. First two weeks, the best two weeks of the season is mother season. How many women can, can vote and manage one of these mother hoods? Very few. It, it gets hard for me. My dad hunted up until he was 88. He's coming up there. The last year he hunted, you know how he had to go. And that, that was, he come the first two weeks because that was the best, best two weeks. He bought out a state license, 300 bucks to do it. The last 300, you know what he had to do after he shot his mother for the first time to reload? Get the ball started. Then he had to take the ramrod and get a pencil tree and put his weight against the tree to load. It. How many kids you gonna how many kids you gonna you gonna send out there with a the mother loader? They can't load it. And they may they may make a big mistake and overload it and blow it up. Now if you exchange that season, that muzzleloader season, toward the end, 
sleep for a week and get loose and I'm going to take that jar away. Okay. Got to put the pressure on. I wish I wish I wish I we're not going to have any duck hunting. We're not going to have any deer hunting. And I mean, that's just the way it is. That's just the way it is. Thank you very much. These other two, I'll wait on. You got that. He, he probably, he's, he's three or one. And I, 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 I put it on Facebook just like, just like I, uh, I heard it because I did not have the information I needed to make a decision on it. But I, I, I put it on there as a rumor because to me that's what it was. One other thing I, I do want to say while I'm here, uh, I want to thank everybody that first pitched in and got her those fire tanks. Got it done. <laughs>
those in the homeschool their students and send their students to private school, and I absolutely have no problem with that. But I do have a problem with private dollars uh, being used with, um, for private education through public funds. Um, the current legislation that's going through, you will hear that it's only going to affect five counties, and those are all obviously the four metropolitans in Madison County. And um, they have the two schools with the 10% low performing school. What you don't hear is you could have the top performing school in the state be in um, Davidson County, and this parent that qualifies for this education savings account could take their child out of that top performing school and still get that education savings account. It, it's not just those low performing schools, it's any school in that district. So you're going to hear it's not going to affect Benton County. Um, I'm here to tell you I disagree with that. When we, um, when we start taking public dollars and using them for private education, just like this year, if they pass, it's $25 million. Well, that's $25 million that could be going to our public schools. Um, so I just, I'm just i here to encourage you as commissioners that if, um, if you have any questions about these education savings accounts or vouchers, to feel free to call me. I would also encourage you to reach out to uh, Representative Griffey and Senator Stevens, and they are more than willing to listen. Um, and I also just want to close with, I can't tell you how much I appreciate Representative Griffey. Um, he has come to my office on a couple of times. Um, I understand there's a, there's a lot of pressure in Nashville, but he is listening. And I'm telling you as a commissioner that if, if you have concerns about that or if you're in favor, if you're in favor, I wish you'd come see me before, but I understand that I'm not here uh, politically. You can look across the lines. There's Republicans and Democrats um, for and against, but it, I just think you need to know as a commission that if these education savings accounts are uh, approved, it may not be this year, but you know how tough the budget is right now, and if we just have three kids leave Benton County or go to a private school, you know, that $7,300 may not seem like a much, but if we have 20 kids that leave across the county, well, we can't just say we've lost 20 kids and we're going to pull a teacher out. It doesn't work that way. So I just felt like as director of schools that I needed to come and, and just give you a, a brief summary of education savings accounts. Um, there's, um, it's Obviously, I've been to Nashville three times in the last two weeks. It's important to me. But um, I would encourage you to call me or if you have any questions, just come out of the office, and I appreciate all you do. And I'll be back in just a few minutes to uh, put a program on from Miss Hudson that she put together for you. Mark, is that the savings on that? Is that seventy three hundred per child? Or yes, per person that per is person? the current legislation. Now, there's a lot of amendments to it, um, Mr. Plant. The House version is a limit of fifteen thousand students. The Senate version is a limit of thirty thousand. The Senate version also includes homeschool students, which the House took homeschool out. So there's still a lot of, um, matter of fact, I talked to Representative Griffey earlier today, and I think they were, they were working some, on some amendments this afternoon. So it's ever-changing. A person doing homebound, got two children in their homebound, it don't affect them. They, they don't get that. You're talking homeschool. A uh, homebound person at home. Parents are teaching the kids. Yes, homeschool. The Senate version does. Now they do have to meet an income. It's about sixty-five thousand a year is the income that um, would qualify for that. The Senate version does include homeschool. The House version does not. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Appreciate that.
of documents and all that. I, we have an IT director. Uh, it's a slow process, but our website right now doesn't hold the capacity for uploading files, but our, I guess you would say, our end goal that we're trying to achieve is to get our website up to a point where everything's going to be published beforehand. So it's a good, excellent subject. It's a needed thing for the community. And uh, our IT director is right over here in the corner, so it was good that he heard that concern. But we're, we're definitely working on that, and it's uh, something that uh, is going to be a great benefit to the community. You talk about TWRA, we could probably talk for hours upon hours. You know, uh, any, any resident in a big county knows that, you know, hunting and fishing is big tourism for our county. And I uh, just want you to know that I have contacted at least nine or ten members of TWRA. They will be coming in this summer. Uh, I've asked various sportsmen to begin making a list. We will tour all of the WMA sites, uh, boat ramps, things of that nature. I've got you on the list to invite so that you can go around us on that day because you've always been someone who has offered great ideas. And so I would like to have you when we make that tour. Uh, uh, I want you with us if you can make it because I think you you offered some good suggestions. Mr. Vickers, uh, you know, a concern that I have, you know, it's the same as yours. Uh, I believe this county needs a full-time ACO, but at the very minimum, we need a couple of part-time ACOs. That's a, that's a needed position for this county. Uh, you know, we're still in the budget discussions. Uh, I'm disappointed that we continue to raise our waste management monies to their fullest extent, and we don't fund things like uh, a full-time ACO, but we've got two months left in the budget process, so there's still some hope that maybe we can uh, uh, work a, a good solution to that. Now, Mr. Farn uh, brought up the subject of voucher. We know that that is an extremely complex subject. I'll tell you right now, personally, I, I support voucher, and I think there's multiple reasons that have to do either with academics or uh, what's being taught in our public schools or what our children are being exposed to. There's a reason there's vouchers uh, have been so public. But I will also say that I'm against vouchers when it comes to the rural schools. Uh, the rural communities are, would be greatly hurt by uh, the institution of vouchers in its community. The rural communities are not prepared financially to handle a loss of our student body. I support the resolution. I believe this commission supports the resolution that we passed previously, and we will continue to stand by that. And I also stand by Representative Griffin's stance on this as well. I thought he did an excellent job in explaining his position on it. I commend him on that and support him as well. Uh, now, you know, the issue that wasn't brought up that I wish to bring up because I'm, I'm, I'm getting to the point, uh, we've had enough rumor and innuendo uh, circulating around in this county, well, I'm about to address it. And Mr. Ma Madison, uh, Madison, you know, you know that I've always been open with you, and I, I, I'm an open door. You're welcome to come in and express your concern uh, again. I believe we share that same concern. But I've heard the claim, you know, the mayor's trying to zone over the past weekend, and nothing is further from the truth. The basic premise of such rumors solely resides with the residents of multiple locations who sparsely resides on occasion in Bend County and somehow believes unless he proclaims what is right, then everyone else must be wrong. Not one single item on this agenda relates to anything related to zoning. Not one. And if it ever did, it would only be related to an industrial development requirement and have to go through multiple public meetings at that. The county has no interest in zoning, and it is something I personally am opposed to, for I stood in this very room a while back and resisted the floodplain adoption zoning proposal because I believe it to have a negative impact on the citizens of Bent County. Still, this unnamed individual and sparse time resident of our county still believes in purposely creating rumor and public panic for his own ego and personal motives to keep this county in the past. Well, I ran against our past behaviors as a government and I wish to move the county forward. Citizens of Benton County, we have a great litter, waste, blight, and illegal dumping problem in our county. If you don't believe me, then all you have to do is get out and drive around. I've been very public in my desire and efforts to address this great problem. It has absolutely nothing to do with zoning, but rather simply enforcing the laws granted to us from the state of Tennessee. There are over 
six sections of Tennessee Code annotated that allow us this privilege. TCAs 5, 6, 13, 39, 55, and 68 all uh, address the issue of my concern. No zoning is needed. We just need to enforce the laws already at our disposal. I think I've heard the same thing when it comes to our immigration issue we see in the news. If you're not breaking any law already in existence, you really have nothing to worry about. To sit and say I can do what I want, any way I want, any time I want when it comes to creating an illegal dump and trash heap with no regard to the health and environmental hazards of potential citizens is, I believe, careless and wrong. I am astonished that these same folks will complain about EWS or waste management and their threat to our citizens, yet ignore their own trash heaps and dumps. Now, if you're not creating a dump, set, dump site of trash and waste, or who knows what, then you really don't have any worries, do you? So to the unnamed individuals, and I think that's plural, who desire to constantly create division and public panic through false claims, innuendo, gossip, and rumor, and who oftentimes professes judgment upon those who disagree, I would suggest the Bible has over 32 verses related to purposely spreading hearsay and gossip. And one such verse in this Bible is quoted from, ironically, the book of James, chapter 1, <laughs> verse... <laughs> the book of James, chapter 1, verse 26, and it's being used for weekend. Those who consider themselves religious and, you do, and yet do not keep a tight rein on their tongues to see themselves and their religion is worthless. Thank you for letting me address the body. Thank you. Thank you. Budget of line item 10. You can speak again, maybe. The National Children Mental Health Awareness Day Occupation.
things that we have at the school. So um, we watched this this morning. It's probably three or four minutes, but I uh, um, hope you will watch it and enjoy. And again, thanks to Karen and the teachers and the students for um, making this. Scott, thank you for taking care of the computer and reader. <laughs> students and 
further our careers by learning mathematical facts. How to learn how to aim is by Betty James Wright, the two of James Strait. How to classify shapes based on their properties. Learn text, place, and page. Practicing division on IXL helps me remember how to do it. Ms. Deborah also has taught us how to convert decimals to fractions, and labeling helped me show my work. And that being a math teacher isn't just about teaching math, but it's about helping us with our kids. And doing the time common denominator for adding or subtracting fractions. How to spread kindness and knowledge. Rounding decimals, multiplying decimals, dividing decimals, converting decimals, and being a good person, but not with decimals. Because Miss Deborah teaches us not just decimals, but being a great teacher also. When you add and subtract decimals, you better want to make good decimals. She also, she also teaches us how to solve life, life problems, and you can compare fractions by using the same. The very good denominator is a never trust denominator. A waiter in good hands is a career and technical center. We learn to be responsible, friendly, and curious and community. One way we learn is through the computerized world fair based program. It addresses family stress and parenting skills as well as digestion. We have different types of babies right here. We have from a drug baby to a shaky baby. Um, each baby is com com computerized for 24 hours all weekend, and you use a bracelet to chat it to make it stop crying or um, it'll coo when it's done. Um, this is the shaky baby. It shows like how if you shake a newborn or an infant, like their brain is a lot softer than ours, and like if you if it's head moves, it doesn't damage the brain, it doesn't cause damage or like it. Um, each baby is different. It can cry from 10 minutes to 20 minutes at each time. Um, it can go from 1 o'clock in the morning to 5 o'clock in the evening. It doesn't matter. And as long as you chime it, you'll get that, that care done. But if not, it'll be on a sheet of paper to show you what you missed and what you did.
one nighter to another, you too have something in this box, Brett Lashley. Our awesome leader, Mark Florence, has it for you now. Take it away, Mr. Florence. <laughs>
public safety grant within the school budget. Motion, Ms. Dana. Second. Ms. Angie, second. Where is the estimate expenditure were not enough to meet the necessary expenditure of certain subsidiary item of the primary series of the school budget, therefore resolved County Board of Education to approve the following change. It is 2018. 6,750 increased revenue to expenditure of the supply of material, 6,750. It was recommended by budget. Recommended by budget. All in favor say aye. Aye. No no's, I agree. Things look passed. Line item 16. Resolution budget and read the be ready summer grant within the school budget. Need a motion? Mark. Second. Second by Kenny Miller.
I have to motion to amend that you need a second. 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 Yes, sir. Second. 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 Second.